Hello there. This this is Jai Bano, you on the J Men Show on WBCA 102.9 FM, Boston's local community radio station. My guest today is, co- is artist, musician, Kofi. Co- Why co- Kofi from Boston, Massachusetts? Did that say it correctly? Kofi B, yes. Um, okay, Kofi B, okay. Good to see you. It's good to see you on the show. How, how, how you doing? I can't complain, man. It's been a good morning so far, and um, I'm glad. Thanks for having me, man. Truly an honor. Absolutely. Okay, so can you tell me a little about yourself, about yourself, and what made you get started in music? Sure, man. I grew up in the inner city of Akron, Ohio. That's my hometown. I uh, started playing music at the age of about eight years old. Um, when it was introduced to me, it was just a, a, a random question that my mom asked. And at that time, I was exploring and trying so many different activities. I was doing, you know, karate, baseball, um, you know, so many different things that, you know, kids do. And um, for some reason, music was the thing that caught on for me. And, um, you know, I remember the first time I took a lesson, I, it was a big group class and I was eight, but all the other kids are like five years old. And I, it wasn't something that I enjoyed. I remember I was leaving saying I'd never play piano ever again. But uh, the piano teacher pulled me aside. She looked at my hands and she said, you know, Kofi, I see something in you. Um, you know, there's something about this music thing that I feel like you need this. So, you know, she said, stick with me. Instead of these group classes, let's do individual one-on-one private lessons. From there, man, it sky was the limit, man. Music has been the connecting factor for me and many people around the world that listen to what I do. Absolutely, because I saw, because I listen to some music and, it, and it's great, you know. I mean, you sound, you, you sound just, just like, you know, just like Alicia Keys, you know, out there, you know, and yeah, you know, yeah. And Absolutely. yeah, no, it's a blessing to be able to play music, you know. So, what inspires you to do, to do what you do? What gives you create, uh, uh, creativity? Oh man, uh, life experiences, they fuel me. Um, you know, growing up in the situation that I was kind of given and the cars that I was dealt growing up, it was, it was kind of like, you know, sink or swim, you know. Um, I grew up in a single parent household too. So um, a lot of the times, um, a lot of the words that my mother would tell me had to inspire me. And I grew up in a household where my father wasn't around and he made that decision to not be around. So when he left, he said, you know, you won't amount to anything. You won't be anything without me. So I had a choice of either folding and believing that narrative that he had for me or flourishing and doing whatever I believe I said I could do. And, you know, I think, I think I chose that, that right decision and music has helped to be that contributing factor toward that for me. Well, that's good. That's wonderful to hear, you know, because I definitely understand, understand where you're coming from, you know, because I can relate to that, you know, from those kind of experiences myself, you know, so yeah. Um, so what kind of music, so what kind of music do you do lots of sing and, and write about? Say that one more time for me. Oh, that's a, what kind of music do you like, do you like to sing and write about? What kind of music do you like, do you like to sing? I like to sing and write about. Um, well, <laughs> as far as with the singing aspect of it, we're not, we're not, completely there yet where I'm starting to write more like lyrics and everything but as far as with music that I I I do write or compose I mean it comes from a feeling of again going back to life experiences for me um one of the songs that I made back when I was 16 is called Unspoken and that song was fueled directly from the death of my cousin um he who died tragically just uh, playing a game of basketball and collapsed and you know entered into cardiac arrest um and so you have moments like that where it's like, okay, you know, when words fail, music speaks. And that's always been the motto for me. So I always kind of go to that instrument and let that speak and be the words that I can not say. So a lot of the motivation and inspiration comes from those moments in my life fueling what I do. Okay. Well, my, again, my condolences, my condolences to your cousin, you know, if you're so sorry for your loss, man. You know, I can understand how you feel because my mother, my mother passed. So I know how you feel, you know, do something you love, you know. You know, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so. Um, I guess my next question is: What advice can you give artists that, that want to be the next Kofi B or want to do what you do? What advice can you give us? <laughs> what advice would I give you? Yeah. Um, the advice that I would give somebody that's whether they're trying to be like me um, mm-hmm. is to understand that one, they are them. So mm-hmm. you know, you, there will never be another Kofi B. Just like there will never be another Michael Jackson. There will never be another anybody because you are that original. You are, you're only, there's only you. you there can only be one. <laughs> that's, that's the advice up front. But most importantly is when I think when you have a dream and you have a drive, my advice is to try to make sure that you, that you surround that dream around people that don't try to kill it. You know, um, there's so many people in this world that will be negative off rip, not because they don't believe in you, but just because they haven't seen it be done. 
So, you know, and I've seen that a lot growing up in my hometown of Akron, Ohio. You have a vision, you have a, a group of individuals that don't see that vision. And if you're not strong-willed enough, you can let that vision die. You can let that dream be killed because of words that somebody else said, and they've never even done that. Yeah. So, you know, it's important to, and it's essential and it's paramount, I think, for somebody to really believe in themselves first. And I think the rest will take care of itself. And also keeping the main thing, the main thing, you know, people oftentimes want to, I don't know, uh, they want to do a bunch of everything. You know, I think that if we stay focused on mastering one thing, and we let that be the guiding force for everything that we do in our life. There's no way that you can fail. I feel like it's inevitable for you to be successful in whatever field you do, especially when you expend so much energy and time and effort into that one thing. The sky is not even the limit, I believe. Yeah, I can't say better myself. But I definitely understand. I that's a great advice. Yeah. Um, so have you kind of played? Have you kind of kind of played with any um with, with any um group like uh, like Lucia Key? Is anybody famous? Have I ever played? You said for what? Have you have you have you ever played played with any famous groups? Any, any famous groups have you played with? Or any uh, played with any famous groups? Or any famous stars? Or? Not not yet. I mean, oh. I've been I've been in those rooms where um you know like I said I I like to use music as that main thing. Yeah. And um, music has been the platform that's allowed me to kind of do what you do. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. nobody can do what you do, Jay. Man, you're 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 the guy when it comes to the interviewing process, but. Yeah. Um, as far as with me being able to talk to a lot of these people, I try to learn the minds of certain people. And during the pandemic, I did a lot of that, started my own podcast, started my own, um, you know, interviewing situation where I would sit down and talk to a lot of my musical heroes, a lot of people that are on the rise or, you know, you know, kind of just seeing potential and seeing that people can, you know, reach a certain level. And now that they're at that point or they're actually growing and, you know, see some of these people that I went to college with, they're, you know, verified on Instagram or, you know, doing what they have to do to be successful in their field. Um, it's a long way to say, no, I haven't played with somebody famous yet, but like, I feel that I'm headed in the right direction of doing that if I want to. Absolutely. I definitely feel this guy's love. You know, it can be anybody thing you want to be. I definitely believe that, you know, yeah. Um, so, um, so um, are you working on, on any music, any, any new music right now coming out or that we can hear? Um, so right now, yeah, I was, really heavily focused on creating a new project um, at the beginning of this year. Um, and just due to a couple just mental adjustments for me, that hasn't necessarily been the forefront for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I do see myself creating a lot of new content, um, especially in this fall, um, yeah. really being active on social media, doing more of that and, and really seeing that um, be a propelling factor to continue to make an album, you know, something that people will want to hear. I mean, everybody asks me about when you're making something new. I haven't made a new album since I was 16 years old. So, oh. you know, I've been, I'm 21 now. So it takes some, it's been some time, but um, it also takes time to be creative, man. So um, I, I think that I, I can do something pretty special though in the next coming months. So I, yeah, if you want to look out for something new. Okay, so I look forward to hearing that, you know, some more from me. I look forward to hearing it, you know. Um, so how did the um, pandemic, so how does, you know, pandemic affect your music, you know, everything being shut down? How did, you know, COVID, COVID affect you? Oh, that's the, oh, man. The COVID, how did that situation you know, affect you in your music? Sure. Um, so the pandemic um, and COVID forced me to be creative in many ways. So one of the ways that I, I was thinking about it. I was just talking to um, some of my guys back home about this was that, you know, we were doing a, a vast amount of virtual performances. Um, we were doing like, you know, everything was virtual. So we do like three live, um, live pre-recorded shows to be streamed online. And so really trying to, you know, connect with people through that way. Um, the pandemic though, man, it, as, as bad as it was, you know, from a whole perspective, it was probably one of the most fulfilling things in the world for me um, because it forced me to really get back to the basics. Um, you know, what do I really love to do? I love to do music, but it seems like when the world was open and everything was moving so fast, yeah. that wasn't my focus. Um, so I think, I think it helped. Um, you know, it also strengthened relationships and, and helped me meet new people. And, and um, you know, it built, it built an internal happiness for me that now outside or, you know, out of the pandemic, I feel grateful for those nine months of, you know, true isolation or however it was probably now, it's been like a year now, but yeah. so that, that was impactful for me. I really appreciated that because it, I don't think a lot of things would have happened for me personally, um, even more than musically, personally, 
I wouldn't have met the people I've met and, and, and everything, man. I mean, I, I can't complain about that situation because it provided a lot of positivity, even through the negative. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else do you like to do for fun when you're not doing music? What do you like to do for fun? Um, um, like music, you know? I, well, first of all, you know, being from Akron, Ohio, I am a huge basketball fan, a huge okay. LeBron James fan. Mm -hmm. so anytime I get a chance to uh, watch that man play basketball, yeah. I, I, I will do it. Um, and I will do it again and again and again. Um, but uh, aside from that, I love to, I don't know, I mean, I like just chilling, watching movies at times. If I have time to sit down and watch a movie, I like watching funny videos. I like, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, if I have my video games, I like playing, um, you know, basketball video games. I mean, for the most part, I'm a regular dude, man. I, I just like to um, relax and not do anything. That's what I yeah. like to do. I work a lot, man. So anytime I get a chance to sit down and just chill, mm -hmm. that's, that's a fun time for me. Oh uh, yeah, I feel the same way you now. Yeah, I, I, I love to watch basketball and just chill sometimes. You know, I, I think so. I definitely agree. You know, yeah. So, hey, who's yeah. your favorite team? I gotta ask. Oh, who's my favorite team? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 well, I, I'm a big, I'm a big Celtics Boston, Celtics Boston, Celtics Celtics fan myself. You know, so you know. Uh, I think we got to end this interview. I know we're in Boston, but I, I'm not. <laughs> It's about the Lakers right now. Yeah, yeah, Lakers. Yeah, Lakers. Yeah, yeah. They are doing, they are doing, they are doing the thing, you know. So hopefully, they'll, <laughs> you know, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, where do you like to travel to for, for fun? Where do you like, like to go on vacation? When you're not working. Oh man. Um. Where do I like to go? I, I've never actually been, but I would love to go to. <laughs> we were just talking about. I'd, I've never been to LA. Oh, I'd yeah. love to go there. Um. <laughs> And and also Vegas. I was I was trying to go to Vegas last year for my uh, my twenty first birthday, but um you know the world was kind of closed. So yeah. So Vegas and also Houston. I love Houston, Texas, man. The the people out there are amazing, and you know I have some friends out there, so it's pretty cool every time I get a chance to go out there. Well, that's definitely that's definitely good. You know, I, I've I've always wanted to go to California myself. You know, and I've been in Texas, so you know, so I like Texas too. You know, yeah. So I, yeah, that's what. Yeah. So um. So I, I guess my next question is how did um how, how did the George Floyd incident affect you? I mean everything going I mean you know everything going on right, right now you know racism mean you know, the world the world as it is how how did it affect you you know and what yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. um it's interesting you mentioned that I was um doing a sit down interview this summer with uh, former state senator Nina Turner back in my hometown of Akron and one thing that we heavily talked about when I did my little interview with her was race relations, in particular, the impact of George Floyd. I felt like um, the death of George Floyd galvanized the world, man. I mean, and it really brought a question to the uh, to the table of like, what is the worth of a black and brown life in America right now? Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, seeing that situation, um, it hit differently because it caused me to ask a question of when will normal ever be normal for black men? You know, even, you know, you and I living right now in Massachusetts, and living in Boston, there's, I mean, if we're going to be real, let's call a spade a spade, there's certain areas that, that you go, and, and if you're not wearing the suit that you're wearing right now, looking as dapper as you are, you're going to get, you're going to look, you're going to get like that second look, like, oh, what are you doing here? You're going to get that, that jeer, that, that feeling of like, oh, wow, maybe I shouldn't be here right now, because there's already an expectation before we walk into the room, and disproportionately, we talk about so many types of, um, you know, types of racism or, or even, um, you know, any type of disdain toward a certain group of individuals. You know, you think about the LGBTQ plus community, you think about, you know, the Asian community, stop Asian hate, but disproportionately African Americans have received the brunt of that scrutiny. And um, it's, a, it's something that I'm, I'm tired of it more so being a narrative. I'm tired of it being a news topic. I'm tired of it being a trend. I'm tired of Black Lives Matter being the thing that people say because it looks good to put on your lawn or looks good to wear as a t-shirt. I'm tired of seeing the hashtag. I want to see actual action. You know, I want to see people making the decisions to, you know, accept and appreciate and, and really understand black lives because it's one thing to say, Oh, I, you know, I hear a lot of my Caucasian friends saying, Oh, I have black friends or, Oh, I know the struggles because I, you know, I have a biracial this and they try to 
incorporate their their experience as if because they have rec no, they have familiarity with a race but that's not actually acknowledging and understanding the struggle that's just trying to show partiality to and that's still not enough we need more than that so um, it starts with having conversations like this but then it finishes by going to your local political offices and your political officials and helping to enact these changes and different laws and rules and, and things that they're trying to put into play. Mm -hmm. And it starts, you know, with congressional seats. And that's why I was back home endorsing people like Nina Turner back home in our 11th congressional district to, you know, to help represent what I feel is only right. And that's that black and brown people mm -hmm. need to be represented and you know period point blank and that's what that's all about so george floyd more than anything taught me and showed me that there's more work to be done yes that's very true i definitely agree you know we have so much work to do you know to, you know change trying to change this world you know we have need to do yeah. so what do you think we can do to change the world to make, to make the world better for, for the next generation in your opinion um you know what man it starts with everybody doing their part it starts with everybody being able to to recognize their worth like I said in the beginning of us even talking, man, I feel like if everybody has that one thing, there's always, I always say there's only, you know, all you need is that one person to in the room to change the world, right? You need that one person to launch a community. And then it takes that community to ignite a city, that city to inspire a state, that state to revolutionize a nation, and then that nation to change the world. Yeah. I've been saying that time and time again to people because it's that important. Just be that one person, be that leader, be that individual that wakes up every day never wanting to waste a day you know that person that's so excited on being even better today than they were yesterday because it's just so important to to be that person that progenitor of the future that you want to have and once we can do that we'll be in the right direction of really seeing some actual change and i think our generation is going to do a good job of that because i don't think we stand for a lot of bs i, I don't man i think we're some we're some stubborn-minded people but we want change and we want equality and i think we'll seek to have it I definitely agree, you know, because we deserve, you know, definitely agree, yeah. So where do you see yourself, where do you see yourself years from now, down the line? Oh, man, running for mayor. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I see myself in the next 10 years or a couple of years, man, uh, kind of doing a little bit of everything, man. Um, I've been I've been dipping my hand in acting right now. I, you know, I just finished, I was an extra in a movie this summer. I'd never done that before. I was, uh, I actually was like the, the lead role in a commercial. I don't know how much I can talk about that because I signed a contract, but like I was, I was in a commercial this summer. Um, you know, I've been actively trying to, I, I just launched my first LLC and company this, this summer. Um, everything's kind of been rolling within the direction of kind of being more of a executive guy, um, executive role. So maybe in the future, I see myself maybe like managing people, managing artists, having my own being like the CEO of something, but also still being the, at the forefront entertaining and stuff. Similar to what like LeBron does, man. I love to see how he's able to use basketball as that platform and um, allow so many other doors to open from it. So because of that, you get Space Jam 2, you know, mm -hmm. and you get, you get all these different um, endeavors that he's been in and all these different types of, um, you know, unique cultures. Man, the man has a whole, a whole tequila. Like that's stuff that I want to do. You know, I want to have um music and the platform that i'm doing be able to be that um that resource for me to be able to branch out and do things of my own i definitely agree. i definitely think that's the great things absolutely um so would you consider one for president for president of the, of the united states someday <laughs> you know well, i think we, i think i think i think, I think you, make, you, you make definitely make, make a great president you know the way you talk you know oh okay. i I like my private life, so uh, I'm gonna say no right now. <laughs> yeah, I, but I'm I'm not opposed to it. I I don't think so. You know, man, I don't know. I do. I, everybody tells me I see you running in some type of political office or anything. So even when I joke around and say mayor, I, I always say like, if this music thing don't work out, I might have to run a campaign or something back home because yeah. I I just I just I love people. I love enacting change, and I love being a leader, man. So yeah. like, I feel like um. You know, if music don't work out, I might you might see me, uh, you know, in 2036 running for president. Who knows, man? You know? yeah, I, yeah, I think because I, I, I'm thinking about running for president myself, you know, make some changes. You know, so I didn't, you know, because I think, let I think, me know, and I will be your first donor. I guarantee you. If yeah. anybody can president, it's Jay. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. You know, I mean, it's all lots, you know, so I think I can definitely change the world, you know, so yeah, and um, yeah, and like I said, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think it does some of the great things, you know, it's honor to meet you, and um. So, so how can you find us on social media? 
Sure, man. Yeah, you can add me on social media everywhere at Kofi B Music. Um, it's K O F I B is in boy music. That's everything. My website is kofibmusic.com. That's where you can continue to get all the updates and information of everything that's going on on my end. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Twitter, Kofi B Music, everything. Kofi B Music. If you can't find me there, then I did something wrong because that's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to go. Okay. Um, do you want to do, do, do ask, ask, ask you some questions now? Interview me? Sure, man. Um, yeah, let's, I mean, let's do it. Yeah. Well, I've seen you. The first time I met you, I, mm-hmm. we were at the fundraising event for Mayor Kim Janey. Yeah. And I want to know, man, uh, your involvement within Boston. How, I mean, how has that been for you and how has your role evolved over the years? Well, I basically, I grew up in Boston and I think it's evolved because I've got, gotten me some, since I started my, my podcast show, I've gotten me some interesting people, people, people like yourself, man, Kim Janey. Um, I think it's maybe this podcast show made me um, want to definitely help people in, you know, and, of being able to greatness that, that they have, like uh, like you, you know, so I can make the make the talent be known and be seen and be heard. And I feel that my contribution to Boston, I can hopefully inspire other people to do what I do and be a leader and and always make sure you go to college because college is important. So because I graduated from college this year, so so I think it's important to have a college degree, you know, it's like so because you just you know. And basically, I feel my fun in Boston changed me to make to me want to be I guess like a better person like yourself you know so I mean help people you know and try and do what's right and just live and enjoy life to the fullest you know and don't don't anybody don't, don't anybody bring me down tell you can't do something you can do whatever you want to do you know so you know so don't so try and just stay clean do what's right and hopefully you'll still go far so I mean and thank you for that yeah, yeah. It's inspiring seeing you work. I mean, I, I always tell people that that are just, I don't know, that can be odds, whether it's statistical odds or personal odds or whatever the case may be, and continue to flourish in whatever field that they're doing. That more than anything, man, is so inspiring to me. Um, yep. so kudos to you, man, for, for everything that you're doing. And um, thank you for even thinking of, you know, having me on this whole podcast and everything that you're doing, man. Absolutely, definitely. You know. <laughs> Hopefully we can miss some time for you. Miss some time, you know. If you're in Boston, you know, I'm Boston. You pick up, you know, you know, absolutely. You know, you know, the you're always welcome on my show anytime you want. You know, so and hopefully, hopefully I can have you play some next time. You we can play some music on my show. You know, and you know, try and promote you. You know, so you have some music. Send me, send me, send me, so we can let people hear it. Okay. I got you, man. Got you. Stay in touch. You know, we'll be in touch soon. You know, I'm gonna post this interview try next week. You know, so people can see. You know, and send me a copy so you can see. You know, and I definitely in touch, you know, so it's all to have you on the show and you're always welcome, okay? Anytime you want, you know. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. God bless. Be safe, man. Okay, take care. Have a good day. God bless you. Yeah.